So in this case, I'm going to work out this example, working out this example using uh, the superposition theorem. And uh, that's actually uh, talking of the procedures that are supposed to be also undertaken uh, when dealing with the superposition uh, theorem. So it is important that you do understand that in a network, let's say you are given a, a linear multiple, uh, like uh, what we are given there. So I'm just going to try. You have something separately here. So we've got uh, the superposition theorem. So let us consider to say we have got uh, any linear multiple source, meaning to say we can have a voltage source here and a resistor, uh, then also have another resistor, then maybe consider a voltage. Let's just say I've got something of this nature. You notice that in this linear network that we are given with the multiple source, the resultant current that can actually be affected of this can be considered algebraically as the sum of the currents that would be produced by each source when each source is considered separately. Okay, let me write this statement down so that you can, cons you can understand me. Let's say we have given this, and this is the, the load resistor. In any calculations that you were going to have, if these currents were given here, let's say the current here is given as I1, and from this voltage, the current is also given as I2. Guys, you were simply going to add these currents across RL, which is this current across RL, which you can consider as I3 where I3 is the sum of these two. Remember from a Kirchhoff's loss, the currents entering supposed to be equal to the current flowing away, which is I1 plus I2. You are supposed to add just like that, but this is it now. Okay, let me, like I said, just have this statement. Uh, like I said, any in any linear network, in any, so this one, guys, it's a longer statement, this one, in any uh, linear multiple source so it's going to be a multiple source network the resultant so the resultant current okay in any branch that is in any given branch is the algebraic sum is the algebraic sum of the of the currents is going to be the algebraic sum of the currents uh, that you're going to have here. Uh, but that would be produced by each source, okay? That would, uh, that would be produced by each source uh, acting separately. So that's the most important part here. They are acting separately. So if you consider that, that's our superposition theorem to say, we can determine this I3, which is I1 plus I2, if we were to consider this separately. So it depends with the, the flow of the currents, how they are flowing. If the currents are flowing in the same direction, in that case, you must add them. But if the currents are flowing in opposite direction, in that case, you must subtract those currents. So if, they, if this is a positive and this is positive, it means these currents will be flowing in the same direction. That's why we have to add I1 and I2. So it can be a, a condition where this V2 here might be negative. I just want you to understand this before we move on. It can be like this. So in your calculations, definitely this current will be going this side. But as for this other side, it won't be like this. It will be I2 going this way. 
So I2 will be opposing like that. So at the end, it's going to be I1 minus I2 instead. So it's also how the network, the connections there are connected, how the circuit is connected. If it is like this, guys, it's positive, positive, just going to add I1 and I2. On the resultant, this is on the resultant, we are saying it's going to be the algebraic sum of the currents that would be produced by each, by each, which means we have to consider them separately. So let's say you consider this separately. Let's see what's going to happen. Let's say you short V2, that is remove this V2. Consider V1 as part of your circuit. Let's just see what's going to happen there. Uh, in this case, so that we can actually finalize our superposition because they are saying it must be taken separately. Okay, so let's just say we shot uh, V2. Okay, let's just start with V2. You can even start with V1, no problem. That is having V2 short circuited. Okay, let me just write in, in full so that some, some of us, we also understand this together with V2 short circuited. It's a short circuit, this one. Okay, so you're going to have something like this. V2, when it is short circuited, you replace with internal resistance. Replace with the internal resistance. The internal resistance that is given is just this other two that you, is along that where the V2 is. So what does it mean? It means you're going to remain with the V1 and R1, everything as it is, guys. Only that V2 is no longer there. So it's going to be V1, R1. Remember, there was RL, the load resistor there. And in that case, here we are no longer having the voltage V2 because it's now a short circuit. Remember, a short circuit is supposed to be like this. That's a short circuit. Not open, but short. Open, you open like this. But short, you just continue like that. It's no longer there. So you're just left with R2. So it means you'll be left with the resistor R2 there. So this is what you have. So I want us to analyze what's happening in this case if this uh, this voltage is being short circuited. You are having V1 in definite sense. So whatever that you're going to do is to focus on V1, how it is affected. That's a positive. So our currents will be taken this way. That's I1. It's going to be going this direction. But according to this, we are going to see that the currents will be separated from this voltage another current flowing here in this R2, which is that current I2. But this time, we are not considering the direction that it was like this. No, as we are considering according to when the, it is short-circuited like this, the current will be flowing that other direction, which will be our I2. Another one is going to flow in this branch, which is across this uh, load resistor, which is our IL in this case, the current across the, the load resistor. So you can even just consider it as IL1 according to what you want. But that is the current flowing here. That is how it's supposed to be like. So that is the algebraic sum. It is in that case, we'll see and how to calculate the currents. If it is necessary for us to calculate all of this current, it depends. Sometimes they just want you to calculate this one, which is across the load resistor. That is where you apply those current divider rule. If I have I1, I can simply use current divider rule. I'm not, I don't need to calculate I2. I can simply use, that is why we talked of the current divider rule. So I want you to also go through the current divider rule. It's one other part that you're going to also apply under the superposition theorem. Work with the current divider rule, voltage divider rule. I talked about that in a separate class. So you can also apply those, but this is how the circuit is going to look like. So guys, there's nothing here about the superposition. They are simply saying, when you separate, you are supposed to calculate these currents. How to calculate these currents, it's in your hands. 
the Ohm's law, this and that, anything that you can use to calculate these currents. That is what they are saying there. I don't know if we are together. So we can do the same thing by shorting V1. Let's see how it's going to be like. Okay, so this one was for V2. So how is our circuit this time going to look like if you short V1? Okay, so with a V1 short circuited. This is what we are going to see. So remember, when you short circuit, you replace with internal resistance. So R1 is going to be there. But only that here we are, no, we are just having a short circuit here. It's going to be a short circuit. Straight line. Connected to, to R1. Uh, everything is going to remain. Our RL as it was, everything is going to remain up to the V2 and R2 there. Everything is going to remain as it is. Okay, we have V2, R2, this is our RL, this is our R1. But now you are focused with this voltage because it's the source that you are having on your circuit and its flow of current is supposed to be considered. So from the positive, going this way. So let's say this is how our currents are taken as we saw I2. This is the branch of V2. So this current will be going this side this time. I2 will be going this way. This side, it is still that side of I1 that we had before, but this time, because of the supply, the current will be going that direction. Another one will be across the load resistor. How to calculate these currents, guys? It is in your hands. With the Ohm's laws, the, 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 the application of the voltage divider rule, I mean, the, the, the current divider rule, this and that. But this is how your circuit is going to be. So you calculate these currents, then definitely you must superimpose depending with which branch is being stated there. All right. Uh, let me bring back that one uh, again. Uh, okay, let me just bring back that one. When we shot, when we had uh, V2 as a short circuit so that I can finalize this uh, once and for all. Remember, we had our V2 on the first part. When it was short circuited, it was like this. This was your V1, R1, our RL. Then this was our R2. With the currents, remember from this, because this is the positive, so it's going to be like this, I1. And this is the current across the, the load. And this is the current going to, to the resistor 2, which is like that. According to this, when V, when this V2 is short-circuited, this is with of V1 when it is not there. So if you check, guys, these two, when you calculate it, because we are saying here on this statement, in any linear multiple source network, the resultant current now in any branch, in any, in any here, in any, it's not supposed to be of the load, uh, where the load is. No, it can be any. They can ask you to calculate currents in each and every branch. So this is not limited. It's any branch. Is the algebraic sum now of these currents flowing in that same branch? But when they are, separate when each source was acted uh, separate like what we can see here. So if now you are to calculate, let's say you are to calculate the current, let's say they want you to calculate the current in this branch, which is the branch of uh, I1, this one, which is from our original diagram here. From our original diagram, we've got I1, this one. Let's say we want now this I1, the exact value of that I1 it is going to be affected by these two currents. So let me just call this uh, I1A, this one, and let me call this one I1B. So it's going to be affected now. That is where I was saying. When they are opposing, you subtract. In the same direction, you add. So if we're to consider where I1 is, these two, they are opposing. They are going like this. This one is going this way. From this branch, I1 is going the other way. They are opposing. When it is like that, you are going to subtract those currents. So it's going to be I1A minus I1B. 
depending on which one is bigger, then you just subtract. That's you have current I1. This one represented on the original diagram, this one. I2, the same thing. If you want to calculate I2, this one. If you wanted to calculate A2, there are two that you have to consider. So let's call this one A and let's call this one B, depending with the way that you uh you 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 calculate it, guys. It's up to you. It's gonna be as the difference, you just need the difference between these two. You don't know which one is gonna be bigger there. That's the difference between because they are opposing. So I2 is gonna be the same thing because they are opposing. This one is facing this direction. But if you check I2 from this other side, is so you subtract. So that will be I to A minus I to B. Can it be this one minus this one? It can be this one minus this one, depending with one. Bigger, just bigger minus smaller. They can ask you to calculate the current in that branch. It's not like always you'll be calculated, calculate the current across the load resistor, no. Yes, if it is for the load resistor, we can do that. The current across the load resistor, let's say this is one and this is two, or you can call A and B. You're simply going to add this because they're flowing in the same loop. Same direction add. So these ones, they are going the same direction. So that's why you end up adding what you got from the first one and what you got from the second one. And again, it's not always because it's about what the voltage sources out. They were connected here before. Remember what I said here when we added here, when I said I3 is I1 plus I2. I explained that this can be changed. So it can be also I1 minus I2. It depends with the circuit. It depends with the circuit. So let's just stop with time. We can have different networks, different circuits to consider so that you understand what I'm gonna what I'm explaining. So this is what you actually have. So if you take whatever that I was explaining in terms of this, you can also put it in in, in steps, in procedures. You can also put it what in procedures if you want to put it that way. So those procedures are the ones that we are going to follow. Answering this question, calculating the current through the load resistor. So in this one, it's lucky enough we're just calculating the current across the load resistor. But in that case, they could have others to calculate each and every part. So we need this current across the load resistor. So that this is I1 plus I2. This is just the indication of the diagram that these currents are flowing this way. As we are not focusing like that, like we are doing Kirchhoff's law, no. Using what? Superposition theorem. All right. So this is what we are going to have. One, we are going to remove uh, all voltage sources by short circuits. Okay. So you have to remove all uh, voltage sources by what? By short circuits. So you're going to have short circuits. I'm just going to write in short, guys. All right. So by doing this, it means it's up to you. are going to start with which one? Which one do you want to start with? Are you going to start by shorting V1 or V2? It's up to you. Okay. That one, the, the order, guys, does not matter. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to start with V1. So um, V1 short circuited. Uh, now we understand, guys. So I'm just going to short, uh, sh uh, short circuit. So let me just write in full. Short circuit V1. All right. So if I choose to short circuit V1, it means there will be just a straight line there. We replace with R1, which is the internal resistance given there. So meaning to say this, the diagram was supposed to be like this. Okay. We have a short circuit there. So it's just going to be a resistor R1 to what? To here, RL which is our load resistor, okay, uh, to the V2, where we have got the supply there. So V2 also take the positive, negative concept that you're given there. It is important that you consider that. So this is like this. You had in the original sense here as your R1, that is not going to change. This as your RL, that is not going to change. This as your R2, that's not, I'm not going to write this, guys. We have these values here. And this as our, as our V2. Like I said, you have to focus with what you're having at, at that time. When you short circuit V1, it means you're focusing with the V2. So according to V2, currents will be flowing this way. According to this, positive, current will be flowing this way. 
So that means we're going to have I2 from our V2, which is going to supply. This other side is going to give this I1 and this current across the, the load. So let's just say uh, uh, the current across the load, I'm just going to call it uh, IL1. Okay. This, uh, like we are, still, since we are focusing with the load, you can also use A and B, guys. It's up to you. So since you are focusing with the load, because the question there is want us to calculate the current across the load. So we're not going to focus with what is happening with these other currents, no. Okay. So how can we calculate these currents? If we have got this I2, I2 in this presentation of our circuit, it represents the supply current. This is equivalent to the total this I2 that we are seeing, it is equal to the total current. Okay, let me just our resistors, guys. This was 10, this was 20, and this was 6 ohms, which is R1. So I2 that we are seeing here, it is equivalent to the total current. So if it is equivalent to the total current, how do you calculate the total current? Is the total voltage over the total resistance? So meaning to say, in order for us to obtain I2, we must have the total resistance of this network. We must have the total resistance. Already the total voltage is your V2 there, which is the 12 volts, our V2 there, which was 12 volts. Our V2 is, the rep is representing the total voltage. So meaning to say, you are supposed to calculate the total resistance, right? So calculate RRT. So you're going to calculate RRT, which is the total resistance. So according to this network, how, how, how are you going to have the total resistance? As we can see, these two resistors are in parallel, R1 and RL, series 2, R2. After whatever that you're going to, because this is a parallel, so it's going to be like this. You calculate it, it's now a single resistor. But as you can see, it is going to be in series with what? With R2. The parallel combination, it will be a single resistor. So it's in series with R2. So we've got, uh, it's going to be RP plus R2, the parallel combination. There, all right. So sorry for that. Let me just remove this. So it's going to be RP plus R2, the parallel combination. How do you calculate product over sum? So that's R1 times RL over the sum R1 plus RL plus R2. That is the idea there. We can use product over sum. Remember, we need the total current, which represents I2. So let's substitute and see what we were going to obtain at the end. So R1, the 6 R, RL, which is 20. So we've got 6 by 20 over 6 plus 20. Whatever that you're going to obtain, you add to R2, which is 10. So that's it. So this parallel combination here, because someone maybe might need it. If you simplify this part on its own, it was going to be something like 4,615 ohms. You add to this 10. So it was going to give us 14,615 ohms. So that is our total resistance, this one. So like I said, you need the total resistance in order for you to obtain the total current, which is the total current is I2. So in that case, we can calculate I2 from there, which is equal to what? To the total current. So if I2 is equal to the total current, we'll need the total voltage, which is V2, over the total resistance. So that's it. We can have I2. Total voltage, according to this circuit, is 12 over the total resistance that we calculated from this parallel series combination, where we got uh, 14. Uh, that was going to be 14, uh, 615 to add. So that's it. We have got uh, I2, which was going to give us 0, uh, 0.821 amps. That is the current flowing across when this V1 is short-circuited. I2 here, the current here, I2 on this part here, this I2. 
is going to be given as 0 0.821 amps. This is where we are. Now with this current, because guys, remember the major thing is that we need to calculate the current across the load. So are we going to keep on subdividing these circuits, this and that, so that, no. That is where the current divider rule plays a role. You can divide this current across this current across the load and this current I1. Okay, let me just remove this. We have support. Okay, we have this, guys. You now know how to how we calculated this. So in this case, with I2, I want you to see what is happening here. With this I2 that we have, this it's like this. This is uh R1. Okay, this is the load resistor. Okay, I'm just gonna work with this part of I2, this side. I2 is this is this is this is your supply according to this network that we according to it. I2 is the supply. It is from the supply. So it, it is entering at this junction. It is gonna enter another one enters there. It is the same I2, this one. So another one is going to enter here. Another one is going to enter here. It is divided into two. So that's current divider rule can be used to calculate any part that we want. Any part that you want. Remember what I said on the current divider rule. You use the opposite resistor for that current that you want to calculate. So in this case, if we are to calculate this current across the resistor RL, we are going to use the opposite resistor in our calculations. So it follows that we can calculate the current across the load. So I'm just going to call it one. The current across the load can be calculated from current divider rule. So from current divider rule. Current across this, we're going to use the opposite resistor, which is R1. So it's going to be R1 over the sum R1 plus RL times the current that is being supplied, which is the total current, which is I2. Our total current is I2. So like I said, guys, I talked about this uh, on the introduction. Just make sure you go through that and uh, see um, for yourself. R1, we have it, 6 over the sum of these two, the 6 plus RL, which is 20 times I2, which is the supply current, according to this, that is our total current entering, that's 0, 0,821 amps. So that was going to give us the current across the load, which is going to give us 0, 0,189 amps. That is what you have. When you short V, that is what is going to happen. So take note. If it was to calculate this I1, you're going to use also the current divider rule. But in this case, we are not worried about I1. We do not need that. But let's say they wanted you to calculate that. You're going to calculate this I1. Again, you're going to use the current divider rule. You use RL on top of the one that is opposite. So it's going to be RL over the sum of the results. RL, R1 plus RL times that same current I2. Then you superimpose at the end. So in this case, you're just focusing on the load current from the first second that we had. This is what we got obtained. Okay, so our load current, in this case, we got um, 0, 0,189 amps. With the same calculations that we had, this and that of the parallel uh, series combination, it's going to be a repetition because we said this is supposed to be considered separately. Okay, let's go back to this part. Let's go back here. We are calculating these currents when each of these source acting was considered separate. So the last part, we had to short circuit V1. V1 was short circuited and we calculated this current that was flowing. We are going to do the same thing. We short V2, then we calculate the current flowing through that. That is the idea there. Then you superimpose, combine whatever that you have at the end. 
So it's going to be a repetition of uh, these steps that we just followed right now. All right, so this one, I'm just going to leave it like that. Then let's short circuit another part. So this time, you, it's up to you. You can even, whatever part that you start with, maybe you started by shorting V2. It's up to you guys. You're not limited. So in this case, uh, in this case now, you're going to short circuit. Okay, there's short circuit uh, V2. Remember, we started with V1. So this time it's going to be V2. As you short circuit V2, the internal resistance is going to be there. So it's just a straight line here. Meaning to say you're going to have everything as it is, our V1, everything. All right. So that's going to have something like this. Okay. Everything as it was. Everything as it was. So that's our voltage and resistance one uh, to the load resistor. So also these diagrams, they are important when you're answering. Do not just answer as if you're answering theory. Redraw these diagrams. They help you to understand whatever that you are doing there. So this one, it's short-circuited, this one. It's just a straight line. So meaning to say, we have got our R2, uh, 10 ohms, our RL, the load resistor here. Okay, that's our RL, which is 20 ohms. And this is our R1, which is 6 ohms. And this is our V1, 7 volts. When V2 is no longer there, it's short circuit. You are going to calculate again. But as we saw that, when V1 is in control, the currents are moving from V1 like this. So according to this part that we have, if we have this I1 or whatever that you, you were having, guys, it is going to change. It's flowing this with the current is going this direction. So meaning to say this will be our I1 going this way. Okay, so that's our I1. I2 is going to be going because it's up from the supply. The supply is for current is flowed to flow this way this time. So I2 will be like that. I talked about that, guys, uh, if you still remember. And this will be your current across the, the load. So according to this one, since this is current across the load one, so I'm just going to call this IL2. Okay. So since we want to calculate this, we have to focus on IL2. But in actual sense, we're supposed to focus on this current one, current two. If it was like that, so you can call even this one A. Um, I mean, you can call uh, for the first diagram, you can call them A and A. Uh, this one, you call them B and B so that you combine them later on. But we are not focusing on I1 and I2. That's why we just write them I1. You're focusing on the load. So that's why I'm specifying that let this one be uh, one and let this one be two. It's because of the question we are focusing on the load. So that's it, guys. It's a repetition. How do you calculate this current across the load? If we can calculate the supply, is it possible to calculate the supply current, which is in this case, it's now I1. So I1 is now representing the total current of the circuit. And just like the previous case, the total current, no way, total voltage over the total resistance, where the total voltage is our V1, according to this circuit, our V1 is representing the total voltage. So the question is, are we having the total resistance of this network? No, we have to calculate it. So calculate RRT from where? We have got a parallel combination connected to the series R1. So this one was just going to be uh, R1 plus the parallel combination of these two resistors. They are in parallel. So that's R1 plus these two resistors in parallel product over sum. So that was going to be RL times R2 over the sum of RL and R2 product over the sum. So you can have the total resistance according to this network that we are seeing now. Just like what we had previously, we calculate each separately. So R1 is 6 plus product over sum of RL and R2, that's going to be 20 by 10 over the sum of 20 plus 10. So that's it. So if you want this, you're going to simplify on its own in case that but you're just going to combine everything that was going to be 
Okay, of comma, six, six, seven amps, uh, ohms, sorry. That is the total resistance is gonna be in ohms. With the total resistance, you can calculate the total current, which is in this case, it's I1, because I1 represents the total current. So I1 can be calculated from there. The total voltage, which is V1 over the total resistance. So I1 is gonna be the total voltage seven over the total resistance. The one that we calculated here, which is uh, 12,667. So that was gonna give us I1, which is 0 0.553 amps. We have I1. But remember, this is not part of our question. We are just calculating so that it can help us as the supply. Remember from our current divider rule, you need what? The supply. So this is it. I1 is there. This is where we have our I1, which is the supply. And this is 0 0.553 amps. So you can see that the current divider rule again is going to play a role here. From our current divider rule. This can play a role because we can see that from the current divider rule, what is happening? I1, which is the supply, is the one that is supplying this current across the load resistor and this current across R2. They are divided. So for, just, just forget about this. Yeah, the current here, the current, we are focusing on the current here. It enters here, divided to this one, another one goes here. So current divider rule can be used. So from the current divider rule, we can calculate the current across the load resistor, which is IL2. If they wanted you to calculate the current across this R2, that is the major focus of the diagram, or they want you to calculate the current in each branch, you can also calculate it using the current divider rule. But in this case, we are focusing with the load. So IL2 is going to be, uh, remember I said current divider rule, you use the opposite resistor. Remember the current here is divided among these two resistors, R2 and RL. So you use the opposite resistor on top. So it's going to be R2 over the sum of the resistors, RL plus R2 times the current that is being supplied, which is I1, our total current. So that's IL. So it's going to be uh, R2, which is 10, over the sum of these two resistors. 20 plus 10 times I1, where I1 is what? 0 0.553. Okay, that's 0 0.553. So that's it. You're going to obtain uh, this current I2 from this calculation, which is going to give us 0 0.184 amps. Please, guys, like I said, this question is focusing on the load current. Do not say in future case when you are using superposition theorem, you just focus with the load. No. They can ask you even for this I2. You can also use your current divider rule. But in this case, the question is the, the major focus is for us to determine the current across RL. So that's why we are dealing with RL. So now we go back to the original diagram according to the currents, how they are presented. Because we have got IL for this second one. Okay, let me just write it here, 0, 0.184. We calculated this. Uh, this is, let's hope guys, this network is going to allow us to finish uh, 0, 0.184. Just going to present it here. Okay. That's our current across the load two in this case, uh, 0, 0,184 amps. This is what we got. So you must now superimpose. So all this you are calculating, you are done, you have got everything, guys. Here, here because of uh, these softwares that I'm using, guys, they end up affecting me, so that's why I have to remove some of these things. All right, this is what you do. You superimpose now. You look into the two circuits that you had and superimpose. 
the two. So this is where now the part of the current direction is playing a role. That is, are they in the same direction? You add. Are they in opposite di direction? You subtract. So according to us, our question here, the currents are going the same direction. So that's why we are given the I1 plus I2. The currents, if you check here, if you calculate here, I L1, this one, it's going down. It's going like this. If you check from the second diagram, it's going the, this direction. So you add them when it's like that. So that means the current across the load was going to be the current that we obtained from the load from this first uh, calculation plus the current that we got from the load from the second calculation, depending with which one was your first calculation, which one was your second calculation. So you can add them now. So that is going to be uh, 0, 0.189 plus this one, which we got as 0, 0.184 amps. So the sum of these two is going to give us the load current, the one that we are being asked there, which is 0, 0.373 amps. Just like that. You have your current. So that is your superposition theorem. So it is not only about the load current, like I said. They might ask you if, if it was about I1, how are you going to uh, superimpose I1? If you check, we had I1 that we calculated and this other I1. They are in opposite. Look, they are opposing. So for I1, you are going to subtract. The currents that you obtained, the I1 that you bought when you calculated, there was I1, if you remember there. And this one, you subtract them. Let's check for I2. I2, in this case, is going this way. This one is going this way. They're opposing. Again, you're going to subtract. So for I1 and I2, according to this circuit diagram, you are going to subtract. Let's say they wanted you to calculate the current also in this branch. In this branch. They want you to calculate the current in each and every branch. You must consider that. But in this case, you're going to focus on the, on the load. So focusing on the load, you check with the direction of the what? The current. How are they presented here? Previous, this, this one. Because it can be going like this. The other one can be going like this, depending with the voltage supply, how it is connected. In that case, you are not going to add them because you're going to subtract. They will be changing. The other one will be going down. The other one we're gonna go up. So, like I said, we just need more time uh, so that we do as much questions as we can, so that you prepare yourselves uh, for the exams or for the tests that are ahead of time. But for now, that's it, guys. Till we meet again.